It all began in the year 2008, when I picked up a copy of Postal 2 at a yard sale for $3. I came home, threw the disc into my computer, and I was transported to a playground of mayhem, madness, jank, and shitty graphics. And I absolutely fucking loved it. My love for Postal 2 made me fall hard for the game, playing it over and over, completing all of the DLC, of which there are two, Apocalypse Weekend and Paradise Lost. Postal delivered freedom in spades with its sandbox environment and narrative formula. First you have a semi-open world, with areas being unlocked as you progress. Every area having areas of interest and secrets to uncover. A huge drive in the Postal series is rummaging through every building in an attempt to find some crazy weapon leaned up against the wall. You are given menial tasks such as collecting your paycheck, cashing it, and then buying milk. Sounds easy, right? Well, every time you complete a task, some crazy event will happen and you will unlock a group of enemies who will attempt to kill you every time they see you, resulting in further chaos as you walk the streets of Paradise, Arizona. The tasks get harder the further the week presses on. The groups that are out for your blood increase in number, there are a few boss battles, and then you enter the weekend, which is where even more chaos ensues. <coughs> Zombies! <coughs> resulting in a week-long adventure that is quite unforgettable, and more importantly, replayable, as there are secrets to uncover littered throughout the various areas. I, like many other players, love the game. However, most critics passionately disagree. Postal 2 is what's lovingly known as the worst game ever created, scoring stellar reviews from critics like Computer Gaming World, who stated, until someone boxes up syphilis and tries to sell it at retail, Postal 2 is the worst product ever foisted upon consumers. I couldn't disagree more. Postal 2 is the game that I would attribute to my desire for wanting to get into game design and designing video games. When I was in high school, I even wrote an email to Vince Desi, the CEO of Running With Scissors, asking for advice and gushing about how much I loved the game. Months ago, when I heard of Postal 4 being released and that it was being designed and created by Running With Scissors, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to see what almost 20 years of technological advancements and game development in a studio that loved their game would create. Enter the bomb that is Postal 4 no regrets. And, uh, speaking of dropping bombs... Now the very first thing I noticed about Postal 4 was the 3 frames per second cartoons with lackluster voice overwork. Like, listen to this. El hombre of the hour. Good of you to finally show up. Oh, no, this. I was just cutting up some tacos. Um, yes, I do love them with a good red sauce. And these are interspersed throughout the entire game. I don't understand who made this call and why. These cartoons absolutely just destroy the tempo and pacing. And it's not like there aren't any cutscenes in the game. Damn near every task has some fully animated cutscene, but why don't the day changes or any of these other huge story moments? Nope, we get the shitty cartoons. Now moving on to the rest of the game, you are once again thrust in the shoes of the postal dude, who at the start has his mobile trailer stolen and no cash. And you were first given the task of finding a job, which in proper fashion includes a lewd message on a piece of cardboard, and harassing people looking for jobs. Got any jobs for me? I'm not afraid to get down and dirty. After a few unhappy customers, you get a tip about a temp agency that could land you a job and some money. Heading to this first task, you run into your first zap zone, which these are just replacing Postal 2's loading zone signs. 
So yes, after near 20 years of advances in gaming, running with scissors can still not accomplish different zones not having these strange loading zones. In Postal 2, they were usually just tunnels, which were very clearly a loading zone, but here in Postal 4, it's just some arbitrary space on the road, which slams you to a hole and gives you a swift 10 second loading screen. And I'm running this on an SSD, an i9 9900K, and an RTX 2080 Ti. These 10 second loads are frequent enough that it made me want to stop going to my other tasks. Your first three tasks, they include working as an animal catcher, which, like I said, has a fully animated cutscene when you arrive. But completing this specific task is annoying. It is damn near impossible. You must lure three dogs and three cats back to this guy's van for purposes. Now it is explained that the luring is simple. For dogs, you drop a biscuit, dog eats it, dog follows you. Awesome. You drop some catnip, the cat runs over, you sneak up behind the cat, you grab the cat. Easier said than done. The animal AI is atrocious. Dogs don't respond, cats don't care about catnip, and this task is just bamboo shoots under the fingernails trying to accomplish this. And it's not just the animal AI. The regular pedestrian AI is also it's really, really, really bad. They don't respond. Sometimes they just get locked. They're standing in one place, not doing anything, not responding to gunshots or whatever. Your next task, you're a sewer worker. You're replacing light bulbs. You're using grenades to clear, uh, human fecal matter that is clogging the system in a quick game of the floor is not lava, but shit water. You're doing this platforming minigame, hopping across to try and collect these parts, right? This task was much better than the animal catcher task. It had multiple stages and at some parts actually utilized some physics and puzzle solving. Now the tasks overall in this game range from a giant pain in the ass, some pretty funny, and then one of which somehow turned me into a cat. So, I mean, I did what every normal person would do, and... But this cat mission threw new cat tasks at you, one of which involved a boss battle with a bully dog. These little snippets of gameplay and intrigue and kind of just showing the creativity of the studio these are some diamonds but there's a lot more rough so for most of my gameplay like I explained with Postal 2 was exploring going from building to building hoping to find some secrets and some of the interiors they're nicely designed Often, when I walked into a home, I would find people in their house, standing there, staring at a wall, not reacting to my presence whatsoever. Whereas 20 years ago, in Postal 2, some people would open fire on you for breaking into their home. But I think the worst experience I encountered while exploring was the mall. Anybody out there? Anybody? Please. The mall had maybe two people in the entire structure. It wasn't all that interesting, and it was the first time I just quit the desktop in, dis in disappointment. Now, moving forward into the game, like the tasks, they continue on. They're often boring, often having no payoffs, or on the other side of the map, which means. I have a ton of footage of me just running, trying to get from location to location, going through seven of those different zap zones, those loading zones, 
And I, I thought, hey, maybe I can try out this mobility scooter to decrease that travel time. But it only made things worse. You're going much faster, only to be halted immediately and met with a loading screen. So the only thing I was really accomplishing was getting to the next loading screen faster. Another big fault in this game, another part of that rough is, Jesus Christ, this game is not optimized. I had a whopping grand total of 11 crashes and a ton of weird graphical errors like textures not loading and just getting some Gary's Mod blank template or this weird lighting error that I came up to. It was the lights, they were conflicting with the cell shaded art style in the sewers, super distracting. Um, there were also these consistent dips in frame rate, sometimes for what seemed like no reason at all. At one point, I upped the population count in the game settings, which another really, really good part of this game is the amount of settings and control that you have. But I upped the population count to try and get some more life into the world, but would not recommend it. It severely harmed my performance. This game, it needs a lot more work. It should never have been rolled out as the 1.0 full release. I can see that, you know, there's the same level of humor and love. This game was pushed out prematurely, and it needs more of that Running With Scissors TLC. And to be honest, I fully expect a lot of the issues to get fixed in the future. And additionally, they're going to implement co-op, which I think will add another huge fun factor to this game. But we also have the modding community, which may work faster than Running With Scissors. And in the past, they built an entire co-op mod in Postal 2, and it worked perfectly. I would expect a lot of the modding community to come together and put things into the game. So all in all, my final verdict is this game is broken and it broke my heart. I would not recommend others to purchase this game. Wait and check in further down the road. If you liked this video, please consider dropping a like, and if you'd like to see more content like this on other games in the future, consider subscribing. They may not all be long form like this, I just had a deeper connection with the Postal game. But hey, if you made it all the way to the end, please leave a comment telling me what game or franchise broke your heart. Until next time, I'm Odin from Odin Productions, see you down the road.